What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with uh, my co-host here, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? It is uh, Sunday evening, uh, February 6, 2022, about uh, 6.06 p.m. California time and the latest quake, a 4.4 earthquake striking out here along the northern end. Actually, it looks like around the western end of the Aleutian Trench. Kind of right there around the uh, Kurokamachaka Trench and the Aleutian Trench area. That 4.4 showing up there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's go ahead and check out activity out here. First, let's check out this earthquake here. Kind of seeing up here uh, about 10 kilometers below surface for this little earthquake uh, striking in this region here of the Aleutian Trench. Definitely not a large earthquake or a deep earthquake at that, uh, but definitely an earthquake striking out there uh, within the last hour. Kind of seeing a trail of activity kick up here along the Aleutian Trench and some movement also along the West Coast and the California area. Vancouver, at least outside of Vancouver, seeing a little earthquake earlier around Hope, Canada at 2.5 uh, magnitude at 6.9 kilometers uh, below the surface there. Right around this lake, it looks like. Uh, I'm not for sure exactly this area, but uh, a little earthquake in that vicinity of the region of Canada. Also, one earthquake out here off the coast of Oregon into the, uh, or actually just to the west, of the Cascadia Megathrust area, which is the major subduction zone out here along the west coast, Pacific Northwest, 2.7 earthquake at uh, 10 point, uh, yeah, 10 kilometers below the surface. I did a little quick check on activity out here, and it looks like this region has seen, at least since from about 1980 or so, uh, this area does see some earthquake activity out here, so not an impending sign of the Cascadia rupture, but uh, uh, definitely uh, not super active, I guess, w when you look at earthquake activity within this vicinity. Looks like about, uh, how many earthquakes we got out here since about 1980? 37. So 2.5 and above, 37 earthquakes. Uh, tells me right there that it's not super common to see activity out there just west of the Cascadia, but... It does happen, and sometimes we get swarms kick up here into the uh, area of the Cascadia subduction zone. And sometimes it can be kind of big. We did have a 4.2 out there uh, back in 1992, just shy of the Cascadia, and also within the vicinity of today's 2.7 uh, that struck out there just west. So uh, definitely some activity kicking up out there along the western part of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Trimmer map tonight shows a little bit of activity into Northern California. Only six measly little <laughs> epicenters of Trimmer uh, into the southern end of the Cascadia. Other than that, uh, nothing else being reported up and down the board. Looks pretty quiet there in the Trimmer department. So we'll see how long that uh, holds true. Also some activity into the Bay Area along the Hayward Fault. This area right here is very capable uh, producing a pretty good sized earthquake and in a very highly populated region of the San Francisco jungle here uh, Hayward Fault uh, not for sure the exact magnitude but uh, it's up there I believe I believe it's uh well we can check that out real quick on the uh, should we do go with the Hayward Fault Caltech website I need to bookmark these guys and uh, because these guys have a, a pretty good list of of the fault systems here in Southern California. But uh, definitely up there in the size of earthquakes that this thing can produce. We've seen a uh, 3.2 strike along the Hayward Fault earlier, right smack dab on it. Also down south here, 2.5 along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. And some further movement down into the Southern California region of 3.5 on the Elsinore Fault system. So the uh, U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, studies show that the similar Hayward Fault quakes have reportedly jolted the region in the past and that the fault may be ready to produce, produce another magnitude 6.8 to 7.0. I was just reading an article there about the Hayward Fault system. So 7.0 up here, right smack dab uh, along this system here would definitely shake things up in the Oakland, Hayward area, San Leandro, and uh, that would be a 
looks like is it due for a repeat of the powerful 1868 earthquake so looks like the last one was 1868 there along the Hayward Fault but uh, definitely major populated region and a, a dangerous fault system out there along the Bay Area very capable capable of producing a 7.0 uh, magnitude earthquake so Elsinore fault system I still got a little bit of cold folks you have to bear with me just kind of uh, just kicked up out of the blue a couple days ago I'm still trying to kick it it's the weirdest thing I hardly ever get sick if you watch my videos I've been sick more times within the past few months than I have in the past 10 years so it's kind of odd definitely kind of odd this one's on the Elsinore so the Elsinore Fault uh, down here, where this 3.5 struck, uh, it's actually right smack dab on it, it looks like. Uh, it struck out there earlier. Felt around areas of Southern California show that uh, this fault system here is capable of producing a quake of 6.5 to 7.5 a magnitude. The projected interval between major events is 250 years. The last major eruption uh, let's see exactly when that was. I'm not 100% certain here. Let's see if you can find that. Maybe we'll okay. see if we can find that when that struck. But uh, definitely out there in the Pacific side of the plate boundary, the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault. And uh, th these guys have been showing quite a bit of movement out here recently. Up and down the Elsinore Fault System and the San Jacinto Fault area, which looks, this is the all magnitudes here, very, very quiet tonight. And over the last 24 hours within this area of Southern California, there's not a whole lot going on here. Normally we see uh, up and down the board a whole lot of movement along this fault structure. Tonight, not so much. Uh, along the Santa Monica area, a couple of small microquakes uh, striking out there around the Inglewood area in Hawthorne. Nothing significant though at the moment. So the last major rupture event on the main Elsinore Fault system was in 1910 with a six magnitude earthquake centered just northwest of the city of Lake Elsinore. So 6.0? Mm -hmm. All right. But that's not a full rupture, is it? No. So according to a study published in 2018, there's a connection between the Elsinore fault and the other fault lines south, further south in Mexico. Uh, um, let's see, is it the, uh, well, the Elsinore Fault System runs goes. down. It's yeah. a pretty lengthy fault system. I mean, it runs up and down the state so here. So it says the Yuha Desert Salton Trough suggests that 2010 magnitude 7.2 in the El Mayor, uh, in El Mayor, um, the Kukapa earthquake rupture, the Laguna Salada Fault in Baja, California, Mexico, and the Elsinore Fault are, are part of the same system. Hmm, okay. So pretty lengthy, similar to yeah. the San Jacinto Fault area, but I think uh, if that is true, what you're reading on there... Uh, it extends down. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more lengthier. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. So Salton Sea seeing a little bit of movement here. Kick off some small microquakes, but uh, overall, Southern California, aside from that 3.5, fairly quiet. Intermountain West regions as well, very quiet. Uh, we did see some movement uh, up and down the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada, but man, it's very quiet when it comes to the amount of earthquakes right now. Uh, and this just looks uh, definitely well below the background levels that we normally see on a typical day of earthquake activity. Although we are seeing out here in Nevada, a little bit of migration of the earthquake activity to the south. Uh, of course, we got this little swarming here to the west and then across the Candelaria Hills. But there's some activity kicking up here around the, uh, what is that, Fish Lake Valley area. Um, I, I kind of look at these little movements here that are that are just out there, you know, away from the main swarm that could be kind of pointing towards something a little bit different than uh, uh, than the current activity up here. So we'll kind of watch this pretty closely here, this migration to the south. Of course, you got Long Valley Super Volcano to the south here, the southwest area, and uh, some activity kicking up there, of course, uh, outside the caldera in the microquake department. Pacific Northwest, aside from this movement out, out here in the uh, ocean there in the Pacific, still seeing some activity ramp up around the Mount St. Helens area. That uh, movement uh, in the small, very small microquake range. Uh, the GPS station does show 
decline in activity, no inflation. Uh, so it's kind of just not for sure what's going on there. Just definitely some small microquakes at the moment there at Mount St. Helens. We're near another volcanoes along the Cascades. Looks pretty quiet for the most part. Uh, we did have, of course, that earthquake there in Vancouver area and a little 1.7 around the Washington and the BC border region uh, 1.7 at 37.1 kilometers I did check out earthquakes Canada earlier and there's not a whole lot going on there I don't know if these guys are uh, refreshing their data or not but I, I mean it just still shows the earthquake there from a couple a few days ago there in the uh, Quebec area really surprised they're not reporting anything here that struck in their own country up here to the north so it's kind of a little odd as to what's going on i refreshed this thing quite a few times and uh slower than the usgs possible i mean maybe they got something going on with their data but yeah. either way earthquake activity not showing up there on the earthquakes canada map tonight so it is what it is we'll deal with that uh nothing going on at the yellowstone super volcano either all this activity here looks like some type of interference or machinery or network uh, error there in the Lake Butte and Little West Thumb area. No localized earthquake activity to report there at Yellowstone. Eastern part of the country, pretty quiet. Uh, did have that earthquake down here in the Gulf of Mexico, the Mexico Basin earlier, 4.4. And the swarming activity here in Puerto Rico remains kind of at a standstill, but still somewhat active here over the last 24 hours around the region. Uh, some activity here in the uh, Colombia and the South America region, also Panama, seen a 4.6. And a one earthquake here along the Peru Chile Trench at 5.3 kilometers, 103.4 kilometers. Wait, 5.3 magnitude at 103.4 kilometers. Wanted to see if you would uh, correct me there, but you didn't. Mm. <laughs> All right, so we got uh, the big island still rocking and rolling out here along the southeast flank. Mono Loa still remains uh, elevated in seismic activity. But uh, nothing erupting there at the moment. Of course, GPS uh, vertical displacement still shows a steady rise there in the uh, volcano there at the, on the Big Island. Fiji did, Fiji did see some activity here south here into the Tonga Trench, including a couple of deep earthquakes in that region. It's One really of them, deep. <laughs> uh, 566 kilometers below the surface. And the Indonesia area, some deep activity as well uh, with a couple fours kicking off there. Uh, movement throughout the uh, this is kind of some older earthquake activity here from this morning and the Greece area and uh, looks like Turkey had an earthquake as well with a 4.1 striking in that area of the world the Atlantic Ocean area south pretty quiet folks not a whole lot going on so we'll see uh, kind of see what happens out here just kind of a uh, at a standstill I think at the moment just kind of a uh, Waiting to see what happens here. We've got for solar weather. Let's go ahead and check this out here on the map real quick. We've got a uh, cooking dinner outside, so we've got to watch the barbecue. Don't want to burn the uh, dinner tonight. That may not be good. <laughs> uh, movement here. Release activity kind of working its way up. Uh, looks like sea flare at a 70% chance. M flare for a 15% chance. Uh, sunspot activity, at least on the Earth side. Fairly minimal, but there is these couple potential sunspots here that do have the ability to produce at least an uh, upper 6 C flare, it looks like. Maybe an M flare included in there as well. Behind this, not a whole lot going on. We'll see what happens, though, in the coming days. Hope everyone out there has a good night. Tomorrow, Monday, start of the work week, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> so, hope everyone enjoys the rest of the weekend out there. Please stay safe out there, everyone. Have a good night, guys. Chat to you guys later. Peace out.